Hey Taurus, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for March 2018. Now before we jump in, Astrology 102, which will be starting in April, is up and ready for you to join. And of course, this one has been reformatted, so it's discounted, just like the reformatted 101 for this session only. So click in the description box down below and come learn with me. And of course, I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursdays where we talk about whichever the topic is for the month. And in March, we're talking about retrogrades. So I look forward to seeing you there. Click down below or come visit me at stormygrace.com. All right, Taurus, what a trip this month. I think it's actually going to just be such a useful month for reorganization, restructure, and for gratitude, for looking around and looking back at where you've been and where you're at now. We've got both Jupiter, our biggest benefic planet, taking a retrograde in Scorpio in your seventh house. So this actually gives you a beautiful opportunity to look back at the relationships in your life. What do you value? Who do you value? Cultivate something beautiful in this relationship space. With Jupiter being the biggest benefic planet, even when he's retrograde, he's still providing opportunity for growth and for truth. So this is a wonderful energy for you to use. Plus, you're kind of the like bell of the ball because you've had Jupiter in your seventh house, so just gracing your relationship space. Regardless of what you're doing with it, Jupiter is giving you opportunities to grow and have healthy relationships. Now on the 22nd, we've also got Mercury taking a retrograde. And remember, my friend, with a Mercury retrograde, communication, communication devices, um, cars, people's mental process is not moving forward. Everything's basically moving backwards. So we're going to have delays. Expect them, prepare for them. If you can make decisions, sign contracts, do the things that you need to do at the beginning of the month, that's gonna have you a lot safer. If you do have to do it after the second um, half of the month, just make sure you check your chart and trust your gut on the timing, okay? All right, so let's jump in and start to look at this right away. Now, in March, I mistakenly said in a weekly that we were having three full moons in March, and that's just a hot lie. <laughs> I didn't have time to correct it, though. But in March, we will have three moons, two of which will be full, okay? And we're going to start out right here at the very beginning of the month with this full moon happening here in Virgo at 11 degrees. Now, this is going to be happening for you in your fifth house, in your romantic sector, right? So this is a wonderful chance where the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So it's going to create a shift. And being Virgo oriented, it's going to shift to try and make it perfect, to try and get into these details, right? To bring your awakening to order. So maybe you have to restructure a little bit here um, in this fifth house. Maybe you have to restructure around something around children. If you started a new business, if you're trying to express something, maybe even in your romance, maybe your romance has taken that shift from just being the new, fun, easy romance into a real life conscious choice to hang out with each other, right? It could be any number of these things and if you have been so single it hurts and you don't want that anymore this full moon is a wonderful opportunity for that new beginning of energy if you would like a different experience here you are absolutely allowed to have it so use this full moon for the adjustments it's going to bring now on the 6th, we've got both Mercury and Venus here in Aries in your 12th house along with Uranus. So this is creating communication from a quiet space. Venus here is helping you speak, think, and move from your heart. And Uranus still being here in your 12th house is telling you your insides have got to shift, Taurus. You get to know yourself differently. But this combination of energies that you have here, this quiet place where maybe you've been working on something, it's before birthday time, right? Maybe you're getting ready to pop out and become something different in the world. Maybe you're going to have a different representation. You've got a spiritual awakening you're working on. You're moving in a way, Taurus, that feels good and right in your soul, right? This is what this energy is beautiful for. So speak, think, journal, communicate, um, speak life into your projects that maybe we can't see yet, but use this energy because it's totally to your benefit. On the 8th, we've got Jupiter taking this retrograde in Scorpio all the way until July. So this is happening in your 7th house, in your relationship house. Watch for these opportunities to come to you to just really grow 
where you are in joy. It's because sometimes the holdup with Jupiter retrograde is that maybe we look around and we say, I'm not happy with what I have. If you look back and you find out you're not happy with what you have, get busy putting in place something to give you what you want, right? But mostly what you need to put in here, insert gratitude, insert humility. You're likely surrounded by beautiful people. And if you're not, Jupiter will help you see opportunities to end the drama. When we get to the 14th, I feel like this is an important day and placement to talk about. Jupiter, who is retrograde now, is in your seventh house, comes into a semi-square with Saturn, who's over here in your ninth house, which is about broadcasting, education, launching yourself out there in some way, shape, or form, the truth, right? Things foreign. What happens in this semi-square is that Jupiter says, these energies essentially together say you have to restructure in order to take advantage of a new opportunity, right? You're over here in your seventh house. Are there new conscious chosen relationships you need to restructure? Are you studying something in school and you're stuck and you need to reach out to those counselors, mentors, friends who have been saying, just let me know if you need help. Whatever it is, if you have that situation in your life, look back at the relationships and resources around you that you maybe haven't been using to help yourself get launched out there, right? But whether that be in school, be with your project, be with a book, whatever it is, advertising, look back because you've got to restructure your relationships to take advantage of the opportunities, okay? On the 17th, we've got the new moon happening at 26 degrees of Pisces. This is in your 11th house along with the sun, along with Neptune, so we've got energy happening. Beautiful new friendships could be coming to the table. Maybe you're changing some of these relationships, so you're allowing new relationships to come in. This is also a time, I think, because Mars will be entering Capricorn on the same day into your ninth house, joining both Pluto and Saturn. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to be launching something out. You know what I mean? Maybe you make a contact with somebody, um, even if it's someone online, you're re-looking at your socials. How are you connected? Who's on Team Taurus? And you could be launching something out, radio, broadcast, book, advertising. Maybe it's time for you to travel. Mars in Capricorn is going to give you the energy to push something new forward. Education. Some of you may be moving towards graduation. Hey, congratulations. This is a wonderful energy for you to work with, okay? On the 20th, we've got the sun coming into Aries, into your 12th house. So now we've got a full loaded 12th house. You are really maybe taking some quiet time, right? You've maybe really been reflecting on who you're about to be as you step out into the world for your next solar year. And on the 21st, we've got the new astrological new year launching off. Right here, we're gonna celebrate. We restart our astrological new year with Aries. So we've just got a full start happening here. It's really a beautiful time. Now on the 22nd, we've got Mercury going retrograde in Aries. So here we go. You're looking back over this 12th house space. What is this project? Where are you at spiritually, right? If you're not grounded, if you're not settled, if your core does not feel tight, if your core has not been acknowledged for what you wanna be doing in the world, the harms maybe you've caused, the harms maybe you still need to heal, you just can't move forward free, right? So this is an energy with this Mercury in retrograde here where you can take that, look back. In a retrograde, that's what we do. We look back, we re, revise, re-edit, recreate, reinvigorate, reinvent, whatever it is look back because you are the key to your success moving forward because you are everywhere you go in your life so get right take this time to get centered okay now mercury retrograde can also bring back past lovers so if that comes up and you're not trying to hear that noise shut it down okay and if it does come back and you're like i'm not sure what to do with that get a reading <laughs> right? Like you make that useful as well. As to end the month, we've got the full moon happening in Libra over here in your sixth house. This is at 10 degrees. So you could have a change to your daily routine, right? You could have a shift. Maybe something wasn't working um, and now you see it differently. You're like, oh, I need to adjust this. Maybe you've got a new opportunity coming at work or a project you've been working on is coming to an end, something like that. But I also feel like for you, Taurus, it's right before birthday time. You could be re-looking at your health because I'm a Taurus us too and we have to watch that eating we have to watch our consumption and our keeping of things so this could also be a time where you're just looking at your health and making some changes there as well especially as we get ready for birthday time and for venus to move into taurus as well
All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in classes, personal readings, and of course, $3 Thursday. So I love you guys a ton, and I'll see you next month.